Hi everybody. Uh, just testing the sound, see if it works. I just thought of it low. Um, let me just the microphone levels. Sounds about right. Okay, so today I wanted to continue on uh, where I left off the last time. Um, so we had created this little uh, workflow in uh, nine. And I left the stream at the point where I was looking at papers and uh, blogs and all these sort of things about what features would you want to use uh, from the portable executables P files, what features you would want to use from those files to try and classify them uh, as malicious or benign. <laughs> So I did some uh, readings and I ended up um, choosing this paper and this research as a base. Um, so I'm not even going to say, try and say the names from uh, the authors because I'm just gonna butcher them. Um, but it's a very well written paper. I liked it. It's a uh, lightweight reading. It doesn't, it does go into some detail, but is not too extensive. It's, it's quite easy to uh, read. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of it, but I'm just going to focus on what matters for the, the stream, which is the features. So basically for their analysis and for their work, the author selected 28 raw features from the files and they derived 14 and they used 26, which is what they call expanded. Um, so mostly the raw features is basically fields that already exist on the PE files. Like for example, I don't know, number of, oh, sorry, I zoomed in, not what I want. Uh, number of sections, for example, um, the DLL characteristics. So those are fields that already exist on the headers of the files. So that's what they used it was uh, the, the 28 raw features. And then they derived features like, for example, entropy. Um, Uh, you can see here entropy, entropy sorry. Um, they also they also used file creation year or compilation time, uh, suspicious section name where basically they just used a list of common section names for executables for the benign uh, executables and when they found a section that wasn't on that, um list they would just say there is one suspicious section name they also used packer info and all these sort of things and well those are the derived features for the purpose of integrating this research into the um, into the NIME workflow, I decided to only focus on the raw features. So I only, I didn't do the, all the other derived features, 14 derived features. So basically if we come here to appendix and then table A, we can see here all the 28 
uh, features uh, raw features that they used and these are the ones that I extract from the files and that I use to create uh, the workflow so you can see here the code and once again I'm using uh, pcoff4j library and you can see here basically we are passing the location of the file we are creating a file we are seeing if the file can be read if it's not then it throws an error um, and then I also created a, a as an output a flag meaning it's called success which basically says okay were we successful in parsing this file because it, it does happen that um, the library fails to parse the, the file and it's most more common with malicious files of course I don't use that as an indicator uh, but it could be used as an indicator um, in any case for the raw features you can see here from the document we have like a uh, number of sections once again size of code minor linker version major linker version and you can see here major linker version version sorry uh, minor linker version size of code so basically this is what I am extracting from it from the headers, the raw features. So I extract all the 28 uh, features. So, so, but this is not enough. So before I, I started the stream, I spent some time evolving this workflow. So I wouldn't do it on stream because it's a lot of uh, uh, back and forth and figuring out uh, what is wrong and what is not working. And I decided that it would be probably easier to understand if I would just preemptively implement first the workflow and then explain how it works. So this is the second version of the workflow. And what I'm going to do, just move this a little bit further down so it gets away from the rest it's a little bit further away from the rest so as i explained in the first version on the first stream about these uh, things i just created a table with three columns the nine uh, benign binaries and known binaries and malicious binaries um, and then i defined a path. So this path contains known uh, benign uh, p files. This one contains the unknown, so the ones that we are going to want to classify whether they are malicious or benign, and the one containing malicious. So we're going to train our the model with both benign and malicious samples. So what we do first is, once again, we're going to list all benign uh, binaries. So if we run this, we can see here on, wait. Okay. we can see here the list of files that is using. It's a mix of uh, Windows files, uh, some app uh, applications. Um, that, I, that I had installed on a Windows VM. There are 611, 610 more or less. Uh, and then I also have the malicious files, which is basically a bunch of samples from uh, Virus Share. So Virus Share is um, is a website that runs a tracker and a bunch of uh, seed boxes and it shares uh, collections of malware over torrent and you can freely download them 
uh, extract um, uh, the 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 malware and do analysis upon it. It it doesn't only have p files. It has Word documents, PDFs, uh, HTML files, JavaScript files. So it's very diverse uh, in what it, each con each collection has. And it's updated. It, I, it doesn't have a specific schedule, I don't think, but there's always new files, new collections coming out. So after listing the files, I mark each one. If it comes from the benign directory, I mark them as, as benign by adding a column that says benign. So the verdict, verdict is, says is benign, and for the malicious, we say uh, it's malicious. You can see here, it says malicious. And then what we are going to predict on is on this column. So at the end, we want a model that, based on the characteristics of the, the binaries that is being given to it, it predicts the verdict column. So we then I then concatenate uh, the both tables. So you can see here it's basically double because I have the same amount of uh, benign malware uh, samples and malicious samples, and I concatenate both of them. And you can see here, uh, where is it? Instagram view. You can see here basically that I have. Uh, exactly the same number of benign and malicious samples. Doesn't need to be like that, but I just wanted to make it like like that. I then remove the URL column, which is not really needed. I just need the location and the verdict. So basically we know that this sample is benign. And then we know that, for instance, this sample here is malicious. And then I go on and extract all the features based on that specific um, paper on that specific based on that specific research, focusing once again only on the raw features. Also, one of the things I want to mention is that uh, the P core four J is not distributed with NIME, of course. So I just created a library directory where I put the jar file and then I reference it from here so that then it can be used by the Java snippet. After that, I basically remove all the, the, the samples that failed to be parsed. Remember, I, I added here a, a flag which by default is false and then it gets to be true if you get to the end of extracting all the features. And we can see here that we have also, oh, okay, it's because I, yeah, this isn't supposed to, this should have been ignored, but um, it's interesting because it's here uh, because I, co I committed the code to, to GitHub. So I uploaded it to GitHub, so it's available for everybody. I uh, tweeted it uh, recently. Um, that's why now it's 611. I thought it was 610 and I was right, but anyways. So this one, of course, it's not a P file, so it failed, but you still have some uh, files, benign files that fail for example this one failed when it was trying to get the number of sections for some reason um, and then it's mostly malicious files that fail so if we look at the ratio of uh, the ratio of um, uh, malicious versus benign we're gonna feed for training we have available for training uh, 52% or 53% almost are benign and the rest are malicious. So we have a little bit more benign samples available for training than malicious. 
and then so if we let me just make this here a little bit smaller so then what we do we basically partition this malicious sample uh, by a, a stratified uh, sampling and based on the verdict and we do relative percentage so it's 80 percent uh, we do relatively and basically we use that so we give 80 percent to train the model and we are using the random forest uh, it's it's quite basic is not the best machine learning algorithm for sure uh, because it can be easily uh, skewed by the training um, data but for the purpose of learning and understanding how these things work it's 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 a good start so if we look here basically we just need to configure what features we're going to use for the model to learn first first the target column so what we want to uh, predict on so it's the verdict as i said before and then which ones we use uh, to predict or to derive uh, what features do we want to use or what columns do we want to use in these cases or it's columns we want to use to predict the verdict and then we just use the, the rest of the 20% samples and we predict based on the trained model and if we look at our in our to our train model we can see here that when they were supposed to be benign 121 were marked correctly one was marked wrongly and when they were supposed to be malicious one was marked as benign but the rest were marked as malicious so it was okay so we only had uh, let's say one false positive and one false negative and we can also see this in the accuracy statistics <coughs> so you can see here false positives one one and true positives 121 109 you have a lot um, sorry and you have a lot of other statistics that you can analyze so it's not too bad of a model so going to the unknown binary so basically now we have the model has been trained based on the samples that we have so I put in on the known binaries folder, I put in basically six files where three are uh, benign and the other three are malicious. Once again, remove the URL column, which is basically unnecessary. Extract the features and you can see here the extracted features for each file remove the ones that failed because we don't really care in this case it only failed the dot jit keep file uh, once again and basically we then fit it into another predictor that uses the same model and then if we see what this results in we can see that it predicted that this file was benign which is the case make this a little bit bigger and this column is very interesting which is the confidence so it predicted that this was file is benign which is the case once again, I'm not taking the name into consideration. 
um, as a feature, so it's not a feature anyways. So, and it classified this file as malicious with 83% of confidence. This was benign, 100%, malicious, 98, benign, 100%, and then this one, malicious, 61%. So this would be, in my, in, from my point of view, a very low confidence. And if I didn't know that this file was malicious, I would probably be a little bit in doubt of whether this this was a, 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 an actual correct outcome. Um, what? So this model would probably benefit from having all those the right features to increase is precision so that the confidence levels can increase while classifying malicious files. So this is it. This is pretty much it. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, you just get a bunch of benign samples, get a bunch of malicious samples, extract features from them, train the, the model, predict based on that model and, 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 and in the known samples, see if, the, if it has a nice results, if it doesn't have too many false positives, and then we can just uh, start predicting on known binaries, unknown binaries. So what I'm going to do, and this is pretty simple. And and Nime has a lot of a lot of other um, machine learning um, nodes that you can use on a workflow, and you can make this as complex as for example, using neural networks, uh, I don't know. For example, let's see. We use the random forest. Let's use, let's use gradient boosted trees. Let's see if we can make use of this. Never used it. But let's try. I don't know what outcomes this, this is going to give. But... So this is the predictor. This is the model. So I'm just going to train. I'm going to train with all the samples. So I'm not going to do the same as I did here. It's just the test. I'm going to train on all the samples, all the known samples. Then I'm going to feed it the model to the predictor and I'm going to feed the unknown samples. I need to configure this. Let's see. Okay, let's extract this ones. Let's predict on verdict. Smooth success. Move force exclusion. It's okay. Okay, seems okay. So let's run it. Let's see what. Oh, interesting. A lot higher confidence levels. Let me just let's just clone this one. Uh, let's run it. So we have a smaller table. So we can see here we achieved a lot higher confidence levels for the predictions, which is interesting. 
Um, I'm not sure if this is good or bad. But, but, well, it looks like it's good, but I think these are very simplistic models uh, and a lot more testing and a lot more um, investigation would be needed uh, to understand a lot more research but it does look a lot more promising than, than the random forest for example uh, how can I make this a little bit more pleasant to the eye let's make this okay Anyways, I'll just remove this. I'm gonna have much more. And so you can see there are different ways, there are different algorithms that you can use for machine learning. Once again, also machine learning is not a new thing. It's been here since uh, the 80s. Um, but it has been used uh, in cyber security uh, as a key keyword uh, in the past like one or two years ago it was all the rage machine learning and and all these new antiviruses i think silence is one of them if i don't remember if i remember correctly which uses a lot of uh, machine learning uh, and they were all the rage at the time. Um, so yeah, I, this is the the sample, or well, this is the workflow. Um, it's available on GitHub on my profile. Uh, you can download it. Uh, you can import into your Nine workspace. Just be wary that you have to provide it with um, with samples to train the model and then you also have to make sure uh, in order to be able to extract the features that you need to make sure you have the um, pcof or j library on the library folder of the workflow uh, directory and yeah, that's it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I, will, I think the biggest hurdle that I had was literally uh, understanding what functions to call to get the specific features. Because there isn't a lot of documentation for the pcof for j library. It's also a little bit unmaintained. It hasn't been maintained for quite a while. So it was a little bit uh, weird, especially for the DOS header, because they don't have the specific field names. They have more uh, the, um, how do you say, the description of the field names. For example, if you look here, we have uh, E underscore SP, right? So actually it's initial sp okay so that's more or less okay but they used bytes in last page uh well doesn't really match right so it was a little bit uh <laughs> interesting uh challenging but i figured it out by looking at the library source code um, and also to the by looking at the p header uh, specification this is uh, interesting um, i'm not gonna dwell much more on it maybe i i was thinking uh, since i worked uh, previously on stock framework 
which is um, used to do malware analysis, automated malware analysis, amongst other things. I was thinking whether it would make sense to implement a plugin that would uh, do exactly this. So you would have a plugin that learns, trains one a model based on a certain specific set of features, and then another plugin that would every time you submit a file uh, or that you make a file available to stock, it would pick up that file and predict whether that file is malicious or not based on the features extracted from it. So I'm still pondering on the idea because it might be quite a challenge. I'll probably contact also uh, stock um, the authors from stock framework to see if they would be interested in having that plugin and having that capability. Um, and at that point in time, I would then also implement uh, the um, the extracted features that I didn't, or the derived features, sorry, the derived feature features that I didn't implement uh, this time. So yeah, uh, thanks everybody that uh, attended. It's it's quite the short uh, stream, so about half an hour. Um, but I think it's, uh, I explained everything. I, I seriously recommend people to explore uh, Nine if you are, um, if you have some interest in uh, machine learning and data mining uh, as well. It's a very good um, platform to develop the base algorithms and then take it a step forward and uh, actually implement them in Python or some other language uh, that allows you for a bigger integration into your project or whatever. So. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope to do a stream, another stream soon. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna be the, the, the subject. It's usually what I feel at the time I wanna do and look at. So see you around and have a nice evening.